Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another episode of learning FreeCAD for beginners teaching the fundamentals of FreeCAD whilst we learn workflows. Today we're going to be looking at an assembly for animation workflow with video output. So in front of you we're animating and meshing a set of gears. We're going to be building this simple assembly in FreeCAD and then finally outputting the assembly as an MP4 all within FreeCAD to allow us to view the animation via a video. Now this will require the assembly for workbench to be installed and from there we can actually do our assembly, create it in FreeCAD, animate it and output it all in the same workbench. So I hope you enjoy these videos and let's have a look at this technique. If you like what you're seeing, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to span the channel. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the part design. I've already created a new document and I'm in that workbench here. I'm going to first create a body and then I can come up to part design and create an involute gear. This will create a gear in the middle of the screen with the default as 26 teeth. We can change the default here to whatever we want, but I'm going to keep this as 26 at the moment. I'm going to hit OK. What's happened is the involute gear has been placed inside the body. This can be basically used as a sketch, so we can pad this up. And I'm going to go for about 10 millimeters, just keeping the defaults. And now I'm just going to rename that body as gear one. Now I've got the gear, what we're going to do is select the top face and I'm going to add a local coordinate system to this. This will allow me to attach this in my assembly. Local coordinate system is a datum object. And these are found here on the toolbar. So we've got the datum plane, the axis, the datum point, and the local coordinate system. Also, they're available in part design, create a local coordinate system. Local coordinate system will be added along the XY plane on the face we selected, and just hit OK. You notice we get a small axis handler that's been added to that face. These will match up with the assembly once we import this in. We're going to do the same, but with another body to create a new body. And I'm just going to hide the previous gear. So this previous body, just pressing the space bar, you notice our new body is bold. If it's not bold, just right click toggle active body or double click it. This means that when we create another involute gear, it's placed within that new body. This one, we're going to just kind of half the amount of teeth. So 13 and hit OK. We're going to rename this to gear 2. We're going to mesh these gears in a moment. Take note of when we look at the pad, you can see this one's called Involute Gear and this one's called Involute Gear 001. This is important when we come to creating our formula that links these together. You can rename these if you want. So I'm going to call this Influent Gear 2. And this one, right click rename, Influent Gear 1. So they match the names of the body. We're going to pad Influent Gear 2 again at 10 millimeters, hit OK. You notice I haven't added other sketches upon here. You can if you want. You can create a hole for, say, an axle to go through. But we're keeping this simple because we're looking at animation and output of animation in the assembly. So again, I'm going to click this face and add a local coordinate system. This time, we're going to use the toolbar and make sure it's attached X, Y on the plane. OK, that. Now we've got gear one and gear two. Let's hide gear two. We're going to save this. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to put it inside here as gear assembly or something like that. 
these bodies are going to leave hidden for the time being but now I'm going to create an assembly over an assembly for workbench in the same file if you haven't got this workbench installed just come up to the tools add-on manager and you'll be able to find it in there now we've got the assembly for workbench open let's use this icon to create a new model or assembly new model what will happen is the gear parts will be placed in a parts folder or a parts group you can see the gears within here still hidden and we've got the model it has a local coordinate system which we'll be attaching to and it has something called variables which we're going to be using and a number of other folders in there let's start importing parts to do that we use the import part icon here or the assembly and come into import now I know we've got our parts already in this document this allows us to import from the current document into the model or from a file I'm importing from the current document so I'm going to first import gear one when we insert this into the file what will happen is we'll get a pane on the other side or a panel and it's saying which selected link I selected in brackets it's got the name here gear one the ID changes because it's created a link copy into the model it's going to ask us where to attach it to and we need to attach it to a part assembly because this is our first part we've placed in there we've got nothing else to attach it to and once we selected that you can see we've got the LCS on one side of the part and the LCS on the other side you notice we get a ghost in of the cog as it's attached to the LCS and we've got other X and Y Z translations here we could have created say some kind of mount for this gear imported in the mount and the mount would have say two LCS systems one on one end one on the other because we can add two in there and we just attach the gear either side but I'm just going to use a simple gear in this and attach it to this assembly this is attached now hitting OK you'll see the gear has been placed in here this is the reason why we made these invisible because if we click on the gear so gear one and press the spacebar you can see that we have two in here but it's been imported in you can see where this has been moved as well remember we attached an LCS to the face and when it attached to the assembly the LCS's match each other so this drops down Let's press the spacebar on that and import another gear into the system so taking this gear we're going to import it into the model again using the import from the import part this time I'm going to use the toolbar and pick the second hit insert and exactly the same see it's ghosted and we want to attach to and we're going to attach it to the part assembly notice we've got the other gear here as well so if we're adding parts into this we've got the option to attach it to another part I'm just going to use the parent assembly again and I'm going to use LCS origin of that parent assembly watch the ghosting it will move down and I'm going to use the X translation and we're going to move this across press the up key and we're going to place it within here now these have meshed within here so what I'm going to do to make my life a bit harder and also make it easier on you if you come across this is that I'm going to place it here and also I'm going to place some Y translation so they don't mesh properly something like this so we've got an overlap there and we're going to sort this out in our function let's hit OK they have been added to the screen and on the left hand side you can see gear 003 and gear 004 in the assembly as we roll over them you can see them highlighted on the right hand side here let's give ourselves a bit of room now we can start adding the formulas to these and we're going to start using inside the pad this Influent gear 1 the original because this has the number of teeth on here so we look down in the properties on the data tab 
and we'll bring this across, we can see number of teeth. So we're gonna find the ratios between these. But first, we need to drive this by something. So these are going to turn, and I'm going to mesh together. For that, we're gonna use something called a variable. Now, a variable is something that we can use to attach a value to that we can change. And it has alphanumeric or a string alias. To create a variable, we come up to here, we do variables, or we come up to the assembly and then add variable. I normally show it on the toolbar and then show it on the actual menu system because when you're looking at the menu system, it doesn't normally move. With toolbars, these can move around. Type float is fine, floating point number, and we're gonna give it a name. I'm just gonna call it rotate. And we set the value from zero. We can add a description if we want to have any other information in there. I'm just gonna hit okay. On the left hand side, you see where we have these variables here. If we click on them, inside we have the variable that's been added to our model. That's use the variable to drive this cog. To do that, we come down to the cog itself. Now I believe this is gears 003. If you looked at the link object, it's actually gear one. If we look in here, we want to drive the placement of the angle, this one here. So if I move this angle, you'll notice nothing's moving. That angle doesn't move. Let's go to the formula. And what we're going to do in here is just type in variables and then dot, which is automatically placed in. If I start typing R, you'll see we've got rotate here. So we've added the variable in there. Hit OK. This angle is now linked to that variable. Let's drive the animation of this cog. To do this, we're going to use the, well, the two cogs up here. This has got nothing to do with what we've actually put on screen. It's just a button, and that's the icon on the button. We're just using the two cogs. So this is animate assembly. If I click on that, we get this window up here. We've got the document already, and we can select a variable. You notice it's saying only floats. We've got a float variable, which we've used. So this is fine. So we can use the rotate. It has a range begin and a range end. Now let's place the range end in here of say 360. Step size is how quickly it's going to go through this range. So in steps of one each time. And we've got loop and pendulum here, which we can use. So we've got that there. Let's run the animation and see what happens. When we hit run, you can see the animation runs and the cog starts turning. We can stop this at any time, change our variables, change the range, etc. Let's close this and rig up this cog now. You notice that the angle has changed to 240. At any time, we can come into our variables, clicking on here, and change this to zero. Hit enter and this is now changed back. Or we can come up to animation or come up to assembly and down to animate assembly and bring this right down back to zero like so and close up. So there's two ways of resetting that variable in there. Let's click on the other gear. So this one here, select it from the screen and we'll come down to the placement of that gear. At the moment, we've selected the pad. We need to select the body. Placement is always on the body, and this is what we should be animating. Again, come into the placement and come into the angle. Again, if we change this, nothing happens, and if we click off, it gets set back to zero. So let's change this angle and use the formula editor or enter expression on the end so now we need to compare these two and find the ratio. Obviously this is half a size, so it's gonna be 0.5. We divide these two together and then 0.5, depending on which way around we do it, 0.5 or two. So we're looking half the ratio. Let's add the formula. So if we do Influt and we're looking for Influt gear one, so let's just type that in. You can see we've got the Influt Gear 1 here in the double chevrons and number of teeth. And we have the number of teeth 
and where it's 26 and divide that by envelope gear 2 dot number of teeth and then we get our two the reason why I've done this is if any of these change sizes then we have that ratio in there we could just use the two if we're not going to change the size but this adds for the flexibility of the model at the beginning I'm going to go variables dot rotate times and then we have the rest of the formula so we've got variables dot rotate times infinite gear one dot number of teeth divided by infinite gear two dot number of teeth now hit OK so these are now joined so this gear is joined by a formula and let's go to gear 004 and you can see the formula is in here and this one is driven by just the formula for the rotation now one's going to rotate one way so one's going to rotate clockwise we want the other one to rotate anti-clockwise also we've got some offset to deal with here and we'll do that in a minute let's just animate the assembly and see what happens so click on animate we still got the zero to 360 and I'm trying to place it somewhere where we can see what's going on there we go let's hit run so this one is actually rotating anti-clockwise and this one's got to rotate clockwise so we need to play with the rotation so that's stop that we've still got the meshing as well to do as well so let's bring this back and close it so first of all let's deal with this rotation so let's click on this one gear zero zero four back into the placement angle and it's as simple as going into here and placing a minus on here okay and let's see what happens now they're now moving in the correct direction and we need to deal with the meshing so let's stop that and set this back to zero or we can zero off the variable now to set the meshing let's have a look see what we got so that's coming to this one and come back down to the gear so gear zero zero four the body and where we've got the angle and the formula and we need to add at the beginning some offset so I'm going to go for 14 in here and plus the minus variable rotation and that's okay that and that's click on the animation we can see this is refreshed and span round so that looks about right and hit run and now they're meshing together may need to do a little bit more on there but they're all meshing together fine let's stop that so we have our animation now how do we output this as say a video file or an animated GIF. Well, because we're in Assembly 4, this allows us to animate and output as a video. We're going to use the same icon again, the Animate Assembly, and you'll see a Save here. So let's reset this back and hit Save. So it's saying the animation preview is ready. And we've got this here and let's just minimize that down and you can see we've got the preview scale it's got a little icon in here which we can get rid of so the logo here you see it's pulling it in here we can pull in another logo or oh, that's try that and delete it out and I hit select again just to get rid of that so that's gone now we can change the background color as well if we wanted to I'm just going to leave that off We've got the width the frames per second and we select a file and how many loops as well which is quite handy select a file We've got the supported file types down here so we've got all those there and we're just going to set this it's going into the gears project as gears animation and we need to specify 
a file type, so .mp4, and save. And we'll come down and create and save. FreeCAD is now taking that animation and rendering it for us, so it's capturing and exporting that animation. So what we'll do is leave that and come back in a moment and see what we get at the end of it. If we bring back our animation assembly, we can see that this is running. So I've just brought back the window because I've minimized it. It's brought back the window here. You can see it's increasing. And now animation is finishing. It looks like we're all done. So let's close this. Close the animation. So looking back at the file system, for some reason I've put it in my downloads. We've got the gears project here. And then open up the gear animation. Open with that application. And I'm going to pick the VLC media player. And we've got our animation here. So it's all exported out, it's all working. And that's basically it. So that's an assembly using gears from the Influent gears, connecting those both up with the ratios and the variable to allow for the movements between those and meshing the gears together. And finally exporting those out as an animation. Hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you again soon. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the site. I also have a Ko-Fi or a coffee site that you can donate to if you so desire. And that's at ko-fi.com forward slash mang0. I also run a Patreon where you can subscribe and get extra content. And that's at www.patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Any money that's kindly donated will be used to expand the channel. Thanks a lot for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you again soon.